Morning, guys. Um, first off, I want to start with a congratulations to uh, Coquise Washington and the women's basketball team. They just, uh, I just found out they won their opener, which is great, and first game for Coach Washington. So thrilled for them. And uh, also want to wish Coach Pikes and the men's team um, good luck tonight against Columbia and all season long. Uh, excited. Big, big Rutgers basketball fan, men's and women. So excited for that season to start. So let's talk about our season. Um, Michigan State going on the road. Tough Big Ten environment. Weather should be a factor. Starting to get into you know the pretend weather that we have today and we had all last week. Uh, it's going to get real here in a hurry. So uh, it's, it'll be part of the game. Wind, cold, uh, Big Ten football. So from there, answer anything I can. With the player in Gavin's situation, this is probably the most adversity he's felt he's experienced on a football field in a long time just because of the level of talent that he's now going up against consistently. I guess how do you kind of guide a player through this and, and not getting too discouraged, you know, him getting too discouraged, but also learning from mistakes and things like that and kind of just keeping him focused on improving? That's a good question. I think it's all process-related, right? You stick to the process, almost boringly so. Uh, at this stage, if I can read out every single play, if I can run the huddle operation, if I can run the line of scrimmage operation and stay focused solely on those things, the results will be good because you are very talented. The minute you start looking at the prize, that's when bad things happen. So just stay in the process. Um, he's gifted. It'll, that'll take care of itself. Have been through this process with Gavin and you know taking that kind of secondary role. Noah's been great. Um, he's helped him a lot. He's coached him a lot. Noah's you know Noah's going into coaching as a profession. At least that's what he says he wants to do. Um, he's going to be an excellent coach if that's what he does. He'll be excellent at whatever he does. Uh, very focused young man. Very smart. I think it. <laughs> I probably should share with you guys the extent, you know, he had a very uh, extensive hand surgery. And it wasn't just, you know, hey, let's go in there and tweak this or tweak that. They, they kind of did a lot. And what comes from that is very frustrating for him because he can release the ball and it feels just like it used to. And other times he can release the ball and has, why did it do that? And that's all part of coming back from the surgery. But when you're a quarterback, that's a tough place, you know, to not have total control. So is it frustrating for him? Sure it is. Um, but he's been an incredible teammate, uh, worked really hard to help Gavin and help me and help the team and help Coach Nuns. Um, and he's continuing to work to get better. And if we need him, I think he's ready. Um, but he's been just, you know, a captain in the true sense of the word. Uh, before Gavin's injury, he was running the ball a lot more. Just curious about why his carries and that aspect of his game has kind of dropped off a little bit since his injury. Well, I think that's certainly part of it, right? We, you know, we, we, uh, we're trying to make sure that he is able to continue to play. But there is room for that. There's more room for him to run the ball for sure. Um, it seems so simple. Well, I'll just do a run play. Well, every single thing you do with them adds up. And um, we just have to pick and choose what it is we want to focus on right now with them. And coming off, you know, he's not 100% healthy either. So just because he's able to play doesn't mean that his, his ankle's healed. It still bothers him. There's times you can see him noticeably limping. Um, but he's gotten through it. So um, we're trying to probably be a little cautious there but he's getting better and I think you know you'll see more of that as time goes on because he is capable I don't think Dion played a snap Dion Jennings played a snap in the second half uh, how is he and Jimmy Wright Collins played a lot of snaps in his place how do you think he performed in that spot well I think first off Jameer stepped up and did a good job um, Dion's been playing very well all season long I mean really uh, someone who has stood out to me as a, as a guy on defense that's playing very well consistently well uh, he is. He's got a. He's got an issue, and we won't know until the end of the week if he's going to be able to go or not. So that'll be. I don't know if it'll be a game time decision, but it could be. 
weeks. How much of that has been a product of just going up against good rush defenses, and how much of that is certain things that maybe the running backs could do a little bit better or the offensive line? Uh, probably some of both. I think they are two of the top rush defenses in the country, uh, not to mention in the Big Ten. But we have to do a better job. We have to do a better job with our blocking up front. We have to do a better job seeing it and running the play the way that uh, it's designed and then let your abilities take over. And um, a little bit to your point, we have to make sure that the quarterback is a viable runner, whether we run him or not. You know, He only becomes viable when he runs. And they have to believe that he'll run. And um, so we have to do some of that. So we have to work to get better in the run game because it's not fair to put that kind of load on a rookie quarterback to carry the game through the air. What do you think the biggest challenges are facing this Michigan State team? I think they're uh, very big up front. They're very physical. They're a traditional Michigan State team. Uh, their linebacker, 23, is just a really good player. He's been playing for a long time. I think he's the glue to that whole group. Um, they've got a really good secondary. Um, now, they've, you know, a couple guys are out right now, but who knows? That's not my uh, purview. What. You know how, who will be out and when will be out. Um, we're just getting ready for everybody, but I think defensively they have a unit that uh, is strong and can run. Offensively, um, they've played a few different running backs, so I think it's kind of by committee. But um, quarterback is the is a returning guy that did very well and is doing very well, and I think their receiving core. Uh, they have some some guys that can go up and make the play on the 50-50 ball as well as run by you. So, yeah, I think it's a huge challenge. They're always good on special teams. Uh, Coach Tucker does a tremendous job in all three phases. I think they, they really play together complementary football, so it's going to be a challenge. And especially you go out to their stadium and the weather, it's going to be a, an old-fashioned Big Ten game, and we have to be ready for it. We have to be ready to take our game on the road and, and go uh, win a game in someone else's stadium. Game here was obviously that road win at Michigan State. You guys have won a couple of Big Ten road games in your first two years. What is the key to stealing a win on the road in the Big Ten? Well, I don't think it's stealing. You got to go win it, right? If you're stealing, then it's not yours. It's, I mean, last time I checked, it's not it's not their game, right? It's, we're both playing, so. Um, but yeah, we got to go do the things I said. It's got to be process oriented, right? That's what chop is. We got to go out there and chop the moment, moment by moment. We got to stay on the job at hand. Forget about the result that sits out here. I've told you guys before, and I tell the players, the two biggest thieves, right? The past and the future. We got to stay right here in the in the present and chop the moment. And it's going to be hard because there's going to be a lot of things going on that will try to distract you. The opponent, very good. The crowd, it'll be a big crowd. The weather, it'll be cold, windy. There's plenty of things that will distract you. What's on the line, right? We're playing meaningful games in November, right? So that's a couple years in a row now we're playing meaningful games in November. Well, with that meaningfulness comes a little bit more of, oh, this means something. So we got to take all that, put it aside, and focus on our job. What have you seen uh, from Wesley Bailey over the course of the season? He's had a really good year. He started out um, as a guy that we were hopeful he would do what we thought he would do. And I think he's consistently performing. Uh, he plays with great energy. He plays with physicality. And he's only going to get better. He's only going to get bigger. He's only going to get stronger. He's fat. Now, he's gotten quite a bit bigger, as you have you seen. But I think he's a young football player that's got a lot of great ball ahead of him. I think you said two questions ago. You're preparing like every Michigan State player is going to play. How do you Obviously, know? Obviously, that's not your, like you said, it's not your purview. But right. is that difficult to prepare for? How do you kind of no, go after that challenge? No, you know, like I think sometimes that gets overblown, right? Like, yes. If he was the starter, he is the best player. Otherwise, he wouldn't be starting, right? That's usually the way it works. But it's not like the next guy is is like a dud. Those are Big Ten scholarship football players, and we're going to prepare because I'm pretty sure they're going to have 11 out there, and we got to go, you know, do what we do against 11 guys, and they're all good players. So I don't get overly now when you have guy that is a quote unquote you know disrupt the game type player. Yeah, then if he's playing, you better know he's in the game, whether it's offense, defense, or in the kicking game. There are certain guys in the Big Ten Conference that can single-handedly disrupt plays. And if they're out there, you better know about it. So we're going to be aware of their personnel. We always are. And, uh, again, how do I know? I, I can't predict that stuff. That's 
I don't even try to worry about that. Uh, just with Aaron Young, I guess how has he been coming through with this? You know, coming back from the injury, now that he's getting more and more snaps. How's he? You know, is he health wise, is he still okay? So far, so good. Yeah, I mean, he's been able to answer the bell each week, right? And he's played more and more, uh, and I think he'll play more this week. I hope he does. Uh, I think we got to remember, we got to think back to last year. I mean, he was the most efficient runner we had as far as when you just look at his plays. So I, I expect to see more of him. I think we'll see all three running backs. And we, like I said earlier, we have to run the football better. Gavin Wimsat is the starting quarterback for Saturday. Mm -hmm. uh, and when you're making that decision to, to start Gavin, how much does Noah's injury kind of, I don't want to say make the decision easier for you, but obviously he's a bit limited. Did that yeah. have any factor in the? Yeah, no, I'm not going to get into all my criteria. Imagine if I started doing that at, at every decision, right? That would get, not only we'd be here for a long time, but that would expose how I think. And I mean, some might say, well, that'd be a scary thing, but that's okay. I, everybody can have their opinion. But uh, yeah, I'll, I'll just leave it at the, I mean, it's, it's Monday and I'm telling you who the starter is. Isn't that good enough? Yeah. All right. Thanks, guys.